how I want you to start your waxing process. So basically you're looking at, I picked out a couple images. Um, I liked this one and I wanted to cut that one out so that it stands out better. Okay, and then I have of course uh, image that I drew, which I'm working on cutting that out too. And um, I have two canvases, okay, eight by 10 canvas panels, nothing exciting, but I want you to try to make them so that they go together visually. Okay, so you can see from my images that it's not necessarily water or ocean or anything that has to do with the crab, but they're kind of in the blue tones and maybe a little bit more abstract, which is a good goal. Also have my paint palette here and I have acrylic matte medium, which as you know, in the classroom, I put glue on top of those because it also functions as glue. Um, so when I'm starting out here, I am just going to uh, start by gluing things down. Okay, so when you glue everything down, I'm using that medium and glue first and then image on top. Now, I'm not concerned that it doesn't cover the whole thing because it's not about the collage. If I was making a collage, I would just tell you to make a collage. But I'm telling you to do wax and cross it. So um, it's not like you really end up seeing the collage in the end. That's just kind of a base kind of um, color and texture. As you can see, it didn't glue on that great. It's got some wrinkles and stuff going on. Totally okay. All right, so anyway. I like to have ripped edges because basically I'll just have that be part of my design aspect or add some color or something. And then I'll go and do this guy. Okay, so I won't take long. You know, really if I was doing this for myself, I might spend a little bit more time in what I'm gluing down like you might want to, but you don't have to. You know, this will totally be a great artist. Okay, so maybe I want to really make this look abstract and I'm going to kind of even tear and do, like I said, that design kind of element where I'm getting like this nice stripe. Okay. And then I'm going to let that dry. And while I'm letting that dry, I will walk you through some of the other stuff I got going on. Uh, uh, this is actually, actually for etching. Uh, but it works great for wax. Um, so it's on low, so it has these little colors that you can melt your own and make your own colors with this crayon or whatever. But I just try to keep a paintbrush in there um, for you to use because obviously every time you take a paintbrush out, it turns like rock hard and then you're getting more paintbrushes. And just know that if you find a random paintbrush laying around like this one that's all now like super, super hard, that really you just have to leave it in the wax for a little bit and it'll heat up just fine and it will not be hard anymore. Okay, that's why I break all the handles because then see if it wants to stay in there anyway, but you get the idea. Okay, so this is also my wax pot here. Um, if it's not liquid, you just hit the cook, right? And um, this is, it, it does get kind of hot sometimes, especially this ladle. If someone leaves it in there, don't grab this. So this is just beeswax, and you're going to use that a lot. And then I have kind of odds and ends, you know, like things that can be really nice in your um, canvas. With little beads in the wax or pins and nails. Um, you can use oil pastel to color um, or crayon. And basically, I also have this embossing gun that can heat. So like if you have it's not heating up very well for you, the wax, you can um, just use this. Oh, that one's not plugged in, sorry. And you can kind of heat, doesn't take long at all. And that, see, now that is good, where then you can pull it. So that's where I have a lot of these just set to the side. So you just heat up one, and then you can use a brush and pour, you know, on your canvas without all the wax coming out, right? So I got these trays everywhere. Um, another thing I have is this joint compound, which is just like spackle or whatever. But I use this on my canvases that are now kind of drying, and you can use this too as texture. So I'm going to put some of that in. 
So you could do cool things with this. Um, you could carve into it. You can just use the X texture, you know, but this is a really good, like very paintable um, medium. You use it for drywall and stuff. So it works just great. Um, but so I'm gonna add a little bit of that into there and then um, on, on both of them, cause I want them to kind of match. And I'm thinking design wise, you know, right now I got this stripe going on. So like, what else could I do to kind of play with this vertical line and focusing on design because I'm going abstract, right? Okay, so it's about layering. Um, now, I'm gonna wait to put this girl in because I cut her out. I want her to, I want you to see her better, but not like, like super well. So, you know, me, I'm kind of thinking with this vertical line of like putting her in there. So, um, um, well, maybe I'll, I'll show you what happens though when you put wax on it and then stuff, it gets kind of see-through. So I'm gonna, I am gonna kind of wait. And then this guy, I am going to cut him out. So I really want to see him. So I'm gonna tear this. And so I did this on uh, thicker cardstock because I don't want the wax, to, the wax makes things see-through. So I did this on some thicker cardstock so that it will not be see-through because this is, this is my hand-drawn item and I really want it to pop. So why would I, you know, something I spent all this time drawing, I wouldn't want it to be see-through and then you don't really see all the work I did. So I drew him on heavier paper, so that won't happen, okay? Anyway, moving on, um, I'm gonna, you go to your next step. So once you have this, once it's dried, um, let's pretend that this is dry, you're going to come over to your pot of wax and you're going to get the first layer, second layer on, but first layer of wax. So you're just gonna do a clear coat. So I'm gonna pour wax while it's leaning over this to drip into the pot because I don't wanna waste a bunch of beeswax. Beeswax is actually kind of expensive. So, and that handle is hot right now for me. Just grab a paper towel or whatever. Cause I left that in there. Okay, so I'll always do that. I'm just gonna pour. I know you can't totally see what I'm doing. There we go. It cools super fast. I'm just gonna rotate. Yeah. So don't worry too much about how you're pouring this on. It's nice to kind of have like different kind of layers and drippings going on. Because the wax is so hot, you get a really good, pretty thin layer. So you can always um, let it cool just a little, like how, what I'm doing right now, I'm letting it cool, right? Letting that wax layer kind of set a little and then dripping on another one. Especially if you drip it on kind of like Radically, you'll get another kind of layer in there. Anyway, that'll be nice. So I'm gonna set that to the side. Do my next one. Um, another thing too is if you didn't want that white, you definitely would want that to dry and just paint into it. It absorbs the color really well. Um, I'm not gonna worry about it right now because I will show you what else you can do. But let me just drip that. And really you should let that all dry but um, it will dry slowly underneath the wax, very slowly. <laughs> it is better if you let it dry there. It can cause problems if you don't, but for the purpose of demonstration, we're not gonna worry about that. Okay, anyway, so that is coated. Okay, now, come back to my spot, and I can, get some paint, okay? And I'm gonna work on some paint. So I don't like to use straight paint. Like, you know, you know me, I like to mix. So my blue's not just the same blue as everybody else's. I like to have some variety. And now that wax, since it dries so quickly, I can dry brush in 
and just scrub on top and get another layer of texture. So remember, like I said, it's not about seeing the collage, it's about seeing your layers. That's what Wax and Caustic is all about. Um, just getting that layer and buildup of wax. So a lot of Wax and Caustic people do not use, um, they don't work this way. They work solely in the wax and just try to get um, layer and layer of really pretty wax. But I find that for the classroom this works better because you can do more things. You can make it um, have your images, have your drawn images, make it a little bit more personal and probably a little easier to work with in the classroom. So if you're doing this on your own though, you might wanna try just the wax. But this is, um, so I like to work white in a lot too, especially if it gets a little overpowering where you have a lot of like heavy wax or too many colors. I, I kinda just try to bring back the white. Um, it's a good, good recommendation. So sometimes you guys go way too heavy on the, on the wax. Like colored wax, I should say. Not, not the clear wax. Clear wax is good, but colored wax. Okay. So I'm really liking that. You know, it has a nice, uh, nice kind of abstract quality. You got some line design going on. Um, so now I just got to decide where I want to place in some of my, my guys. So I got this crab. So I don't know. It might be kind of fun there. But I, like I said, I wanted to put this guy in there. Okay. So even though these maybe aren't totally going together right now, that's okay, we'll make it work. I like how these little people are kind of showing behind him. Okay, <clears throat> so let me get another layer of wax. I'm gonna get another layer of wax on this. So I'll be right back. Okay, you can see that I worked into this a little bit more and I put some black on top of that and got that girl in there so that they're kind of matching. And my plan is to put this guy in there. I cut him out more so he has this nice black background. But what I wanted you to see is I poured some wax on here and you can kind of see that because I didn't, there was wax underneath and then paint and then wax, that the paint does some cool things. You get this like streaking kind of thing going on where the plastic of the paint breaks away into the wax and that's why it does that. And I have not put her on here yet. I'm gonna do that with heat. So there's wax underneath. And if I put heat to the surface, that wax will melt and she will just melt right into it. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this guy. All right, so here we go. did wipe away um, a lot of that wax and I just by heating it and wiping it um, and you can see sorry it didn't record and then you can see I pulled back some of the original image and um, then painted back into it to get these kind of cool um, texture going on and but as you can see if you look at these two together they are um, they look okay but what is the purpose? Like, what am I trying to say? So I just have this crab, what is he doing? Why is it on this girl? Okay, so it's kind of boring right now, right? Um, I have good texture, I have good layering, but my, my purpose is not exactly clear. So that's where I try to figure it out. I still think design, like I'm gonna add in maybe some nails and um, stuff like that and maybe some string, but like, what am I doing with the string? So I think I'm gonna have some string kind of going like this and then continuing into this one where it's kind of going through the crab's claws and just kind of adding to the composition. Okay, so the things I have getting ready here are um, some twine, some gold thread. I have these like colorful pieces that I would end up painting because I don't want it to look colorful, but you know, it could be rock or something. 
fades, you know, a little bit of texture, tins, um, some other kind of beads and shells. Just be careful what you're adding in. You don't want it to look too crafty, but it can be good getting in some texture. All right, so here we go.